Napoli are one of the most informed teams in Europe. They're currently top of the table in Serie A and have lost only one game this season in all competitions. This is huge for a team that lost one of their best players, Victor Osimen, a few days before the start of the season. After Osimen left, many thought Napoli were in for a poor start to the season, worse than their previous season when they finished 10th on the league table. But who needs Osimen when there is the again revived Romelu Lukaku and a managerial wonder in the person of Antonio Conte? Napoli last season were a shadow of their former self. It's astounding just how quickly everything fell apart. Now, it's very uncommon to see a defending league champion fall off the way the Naples club did. No one, not even their haters, could have seen that coming. In the 22-23 season, Napoli attained the height of success. They won the Scudetto, which is the Serie A league trophy, for the first time in 33 years. The last time they won the trophy before then was in 1990, thanks to the brilliant displays of one of the greatest of all time, Diego Maradona, and other outstanding players in the squad. In the 22-23 season, Napoli were in beast mode. They won their third Scudetto with five games to spare. Victor Osimhen was their best player that season. He was the highest goalscorer in Serie A. Osimhen was also a fan favourite. In many games, the fans screamed his name at the top of their voices and he earned the nickname the King of Naples. So after wonderful displays in the 22-23 season, the world of football expected Napoli to continue in top form in the 23-24 season. But to the disappointment of many, the team fell off badly. After last season's abysmal performances, Napoli have officially entered the record books as the worst reigning champions in the three-points-per-win era of Serie A, a period stretching back nearly 30 years and doing much worse than their last title defence in the 1990-91 season. But what went wrong for Napoli? Well, the bad days started at Naples after Luciano Spalletti, the man who managed the team to the Scudetto in the 22-23 season, announced that he was leaving, going on a sabbatical for a year. Although he actually became Italy's men's national manager just a few months later. Anyway, his announcement meant that Napoli had to go and search for a new manager, which they did in June 2023 with the appointment of Rudy Garcia. Garcia started the 23-24 season as the manager of Napoli, but after a run of woeful displays, which saw Napoli 10 points behind league leaders Inter Milan, he was sacked in November of 2023. Walter Mazzari replaced Garcia, but was also sacked in February, just three months after his appointment, as at that time, Napoli was ninth on the league table. Francesco Calzona, who was the assistant manager under Maurizio Sarri and Luciano Spalletti at Napoli, was then appointed as interim manager until the end of the season. So everything that could go wrong went wrong for Napoli in the 23-24 season. From sacking two managers to finishing at the 10th position, the height of it all was the Osimen issue. Victor Osimen, who was in the previous season referred to as the King of Naples, had many problems with the club and fans during the 23-24 season. It all started with a video seemingly mocking the player, which was posted and then deleted from the club's TikTok account. Osimen had missed a late penalty in a goalless draw against Bologna in Serie A, and the video featured a clip of the striker's penalty miss with an odd, sped-up voice dubbed over the top. Now, this video didn't sit well with the player and his agent, Roberto Calenda, who both issued a statement. What happened today on Napoli's official profile on the TikTok platform is not acceptable. A video mocking Victor was first made public and, but now belatedly, deleted, Calenda said. From then on, Osimen had a series of issues with the club, including problems with managers and fellow players. One thing was clear. The 25-year-old Nigerian was not willing to continue playing for the club. Despite the 76 goals he had scored in 133 appearances for Napoli, at the end of the season, Napoli decided to discard him. 
In what was a chaotic transfer story, Osimhen finally went on loan to Galatasaray. After being linked heavily with Chelsea throughout the transfer window, and especially on deadline day, where the deal was so nearly got over the line, but for some last minute contractual negotiations. At the time Osimhen was sold, many thought Napoli were making a huge mistake selling their best striker. But Napoli actually might have made a great call and saved themselves a lot of issues. Osimhen made it very clear that he didn't want to play for the team again. Keeping such a player around can affect the team spirit. Also, Osimhen had a series of clashes with the managers. For instance, in the draw against Bologna, the 25 year old striker was seen berating Garcia as he was substituted with four minutes remaining of the goalless draw. Such a character, if nurtured, is excellent for a team if that winning mentality and drive to win at all costs can be channeled into positive energy. It's a deadly weapon for a sportsman, but if gotten out of hand, should not be condoned by any club. With Osimhen gone, Napoli got rid of a toxic player who didn't want to be there. There were a lot of takes on how Napoli were going to regret letting Osimhen go, but in reality, the truth says otherwise. Now, when Lukaku is firing, he is as good a striker as any, as we've seen time to time over the years. After the underwhelming displays of the 23-24 season, which ended with Napoli not qualifying for any of the European competitions, Napoli president Aurelio De Laurentiis decided to appoint a new manager. So Napoli announced the appointment of Antonio Conte, former Chelsea, Juventus, Inter Milan and most recently Tottenham manager in June of 2023. Antonio is a top coach, a leader, with whom I am sure that the necessary refoundation will start after the conclusion of the cycle that led us to win the Scudetto last year after many seasons at the top of Italian football, Aurelio said. For a long time, Antonio Conte has been regarded as one of the best managers in Europe. Conte has a proven track record of transforming underperforming clubs and their leading players. He did it at Juventus, Chelsea, Inter Milan, Tottenham and even at the Italian national team. Conte is famous for his counter-attacking style, but beyond this, he does play attractive football. My coaching philosophy is very simple. To play good football and attractive football for our fans, to have a stable team, not up and down, Conte told interviewers after joining Tottenham. By signing Conte, a man that has won four Scudettos, including the three back-to-back wins of the trophy while in charge of Juventus, Napoli have made a big statement that they were going for the Scudetto. But there was still a big problem. The striker problem. Having decided that Oshiman's time at the club had come to an end, Napoli went fishing into the transfer market in search of a striker, and they caught a big fish in Romelu Lukaku. In August 2024, Napoli announced the signing of Lukaku from Chelsea for a reported fee of £30 Lukaku has enjoyed successful spells at Anderlecht, Inter Milan and some English clubs including West Brom Albion and Everton. In fact, he's one of the most experienced strikers in Europe. The Belgian has a proven record of brilliance. From an early age, he had cemented his name in the book of history and on his day, he's without doubt one of the best in Europe. However, those days have been few and far between, especially recently. Conte admitted to having requested the transfer of Lukaku in the post-match interview against Cagliari. After his excellent spell for Everton in 2017, he made the big money move to Manchester United, where, although this spell here is regarded as a disappointment, he did score 28 goals in 66 games, which is just about okay. Then he made the switch to the Italian league and lit it up. He scored 47 goals in 72 games, and this attracted interest from the London club Chelsea, who had money to burn. So they signed him for an at-the-time club record of £97.5 million. Now, this is where it all went wrong for Big Rom. He had a strong start for Man United after signing for initial £75 million, scoring 11 in his first 10 outings. 
However, this form would never be rediscovered and would swiftly go downhill. This, coupled with the constant questions of how he could fit into the team and the sacking of Mourinho and appointment of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, who seemed to prefer Rashford up top, was enough for Lukaku to look elsewhere. It is no secret that Conte and Lukaku have an excellent relationship from their time at Inter. I have always said that I wanted Romelu at Inter and now Napoli. I had also requested him at Chelsea before he went to Manchester United because he's not a typical striker. He's extremely tall and physically strong, but also very good at sprinting forward, he said. Lukaku is one of those players, similarly to Jadon Sancho, who needs to be shown love by their club in order to flourish and perform at their best. For more on Sancho, click this video here and subscribe if you're enjoying the channel. While it seems that Sancho is now getting the love at Chelsea, this is something Lukaku certainly didn't get. Injuries didn't help him, but after returning from an absence, an interview confirmed his unhappiness with his role at the club and how he was being used by Thomas Tuchel. Speaking of Tuchel, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the video on Tuchel as the new England manager. The German manager fired back at the Belgian and said that it was not the system's fault, but it was likely Lukaku's fault. Well, the striker did not take this lightly. Lukaku later emphasised his interest in returning to Italy and the rest is history. It was the best thing for the player and the club for them to part ways. It is not surprising that Conte had requested Lukaku's signing as soon as he joined Napoli in July 2024. After all, Conte and Lukaku have a wonderful chemistry. They work together at Inter where across two seasons, Lukaku scored 64 goals in 95 games across all competitions. Lukaku was also named the Serie A Player of the Season in the 2020-21 season under the tutelage of Antonio Conte. With Lukaku, Conte won the Scudetto in the 2020-21 season. Do you think this pair can win the Scudetto for Napoli this season? Let us know in the comments section. So far this season... Napoli have been one of the most exciting teams to watch. For a team that ended 10th last season, Napoli have been excellent since the start of the 24-25 season. In eight Serie A matches, Napoli have won six, drawn one and lost one game, winning all their home matches so far. This performance currently places them top of the Serie A table. Question is, can they go all the way? Napoli have scored 15 goals and conceded just five. Three of these came in their first game of the season when they lost 3-0 to Verona. So Napoli owe their brilliant form this season to the managerial masterclass of Conte, who has transformed the team, and the exceptional displays of players like Kvaratskhelia, Giovanni Di Lorenzo, Alessandro Bongiorno, Matteo Politano, David Neres, and, as expected, Romelu Lukaku. With the way this team is playing, they might just be winning another Scudetto at the end of the season. The fact that they, unlike other top Serie A teams, have no European competition to compete for only increases their chances of winning the league, as Napoli players will be well-rested going into every league match. So far, there is no indication that Napoli are missing Osimhen. If anything, they're better than they were when he was around. One thing is clear, the winners of the Napoli and Osimhen saga are Napoli and, of course, Galatasaray.